Hello mga kawamat, in this video lesson, we will discuss sampling procedures. So, dito i-discuss natin yung different uh, sampling techniques okay, sa pagkuha ng respondents. So, pag sinabi natin sampling, it is a formal process of choosing the correct subgroup called a sample from a population to participate in a research study. So, the subgroup shall be representative of the large group from where they were selected. So, sa video lesson na ito, meron dalawang uh, categories or dalawang uh, method na gagamitin for sampling techniques, the probability sampling and the non-probability sampling. So, uh, ano, ano yung mga iba't ibang probability sampling procedures? So, meron tayo. First is the simple random sampling. So, a simple random sampling technique is the most basic random sampling where each element in the population has an equal probability of being selected. So, pag sinabi kasi natin probability sampling procedures, so, ang pag-select natin sa respondents is randomly. Okay, we can select our respondents randomly. So, yung una, yung simple random sampling, napakadaling gawin ito. So, kagaya na lang, for example, ihalimbawa natin, kapag nagpa-recitation yung teacher natin, di ba? Ang ginagawa, ilalagay yung mga pangalan sa isang box and then bubunutin. So, that is simple random sampling. Okay? Next is systematic random sampling. So, this can be done by listing all the elements in the population and selecting every kit element in your population list. This is equally precise as the simple random sampling. It is open use on long population list. So, to determine the interval to be used in identifying the samples to who will participate in the study, use the formula K is equal to, so, yung capital letter, N, capital letter N is denoted as the population size and yung small letter N is the sample size. So, we're using that formula para malaman natin kung sino yung magiging respondents natin. So, paano ginagawa yung systematic random sampling? For example, ang target uh, population mo is yung buong senior high school sa school nyo. And then, may total na pop, uh, 1,000. Okay, may total population na 1,000 yung senior high school nyo sa school. So, paano gagawin yung systematic random sampling? So, kukunin mo yung buong listahan ng 1,000 na senior high school student. And then, uh, let's say, ang target mo lang ay 50 respondents. Gusto mo lang 50 respondents. So, ang gagawin mo, using the formula, 1,000 divide 50. So, the answer is 20, right? So, 20. So, ang magiging respondents mo, kukunin mo yung uh, multiples of 20 doon sa listahan. Diba? Naka, nakalista yung 1 to 1,000 na senior high school student. So, yung multiples of 20, yun yung magiging respondents mo. So, yung naka, kung sinong nakalagay sa number 20, number 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, and so on. So, that is systematic random sampling. Next is stratified random sampling. It's a random sampling wherein the population is divided into different strata or divisions. The number of samples will be proportionately picked in each stratum. That is why all strata are represented, are rep represented in the samples. So, stratified random sampling, uh, you are divided okay, into into groups, parang ginugroup mo sila based on their similarities and then characteristics. For example, uh, yung grade level, let's say your target is yung buong junior high school sa school nyo. So, you, you will be divided into grade level, yung mga respondents mo. So, hiwalay si grade 7, si grade 8, si grade 9, at si grade 10. So, let's say sa grade 7, uh, select ka lang doon ng isang section. Sa grade 8, ganun din. Sa grade 9, uh, ganun din. So, pwedeng ganun yung gawin mo. And then, ang pagkuha ng respondents, let's say, kumuha ka ng tatlong respondents sa grade 7, dapat kukuha ka rin sa tatlong grupo. Sa grade 8, sa grade 9, sa grade 10. Kung lima yung kinuha mo sa grade 7, kukuha ka rin dapat ng lima sa grade 8, sa grade 9, and grade 10. 
So, kasi nakalagay dito. So, the number of samples will be proportionately picked in each strato. And then, next is uh, systemat Next is cluster sampling. So, ito yung pinaka-last na probability sampling procedures. So, yung cluster sampling is a random sampling wherein population is divided into clusters or groups and then the clusters are randomly selected. All elements of the clusters randomly selected are considered the samples of the study. So, like for example, this one, okay, so... Makikita nyo, meron tayong uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Meron tayong anim na clustered, naka, ano na sila, nakagrupo-grupo, okay? Or nakaklustered na sila. Ngayon, ang pagkuha ng respondents, hindi kagaya kanina sa stratified, ba diba, sa isang grupo, dapat lahat ng grupo makukuhaan ng respondents, okay? Or ng samples, rather, no? So, let's say, dito, sa clustered sampling kasi, yung buong mismo o yung buong grupo mismo, yun, lahat yun kukunin mo. Let's say, dito, may anim na clustered. So, ito ang nakuha. So, lahat ng nandyan ay kukunin mo as your samples or respondents. Ganon din dito. So, lahat ng nandyan kukunin mo. So, ang pinagkaiba niya dun sa stratified, sa lahat, sa stratified kasi lahat, kukuhaan mo ng respondents. Dito sa clustered sampling, so kung ano yung nakuha mong clustered or uh, kasi isi-select mo sila randomly, right? So kung ito yung napili, lahat ng nandyan kukunin mo. At ganun din dito, lahat ng nandito kukunin mo rin. That is uh, cluster sampling. Convenience sampling wherein the researcher gathers data from nearby sources of information exerting minimal effort. So, convenience is being used by person giving questionnaires on the streets to ask the passers-by. So, convenience sampling, uh, itong napakadaling paraan, so hindi ka na kailangan lumayo sa area mo. Kung sino yung mga malapit sa'yo, so hindi ka na kailangan pumunta sa ibang lugar. So, within your community lang. Okay? Kung sino yung pinakamalapit sa'yo. Hindi mo kailangan uh, gumastos para pumunta sa isang lugar. O let's say, Naka-focus ka lang, let's say, sa school nyo lang. Hindi mo na kailang pumunta sa ibang school para uh, kumuha ng respondents. So, convenience sampling. Okay. Ito yung pinakamadaling paraan, no? Kasi kung sino lang yung kapitbahay mo at uh, pinakamalapit sa area mo, that is your respondents. Convenience sampling. So, sabi nga dito, uh, Convenience is being used by person giving questionnaires on the street to ask the passers-by. Diba minsan merong mga nagpro-promote or mga nagpro-promote ng product. Minsan nasa palengke o kaya masa gilid lang sila ng kalsada na may sila ng mga parang survey questionnaire. So, sino lang yung dumaan? So, sila lang yung mag yung respondents at kung sino yung sumagot. Okay, kadalasan mo ito kapag sa... Uh, fast food, ba diba? sa mga fast food kapag gusto nila tingnan yung satisfaction ng customer so kung sino lang yung kakain doon, sila lang yung nabibigyan ng uh, chance para mag -res uh, respondents nila Snowball sampling or chains referral sampling is defined as a non-probability sampling technique in which the samples have traits that are rare to find This is a sampling technique in which existing subjects provide referrals to recruit samples required for a research study. So, kagaya na nakikita nyo sa illustration natin. Okay, so si researcher, kumuha muna ng dalawa. Okay, so mula dito sa dalawa, sabi natin expert na ito dun sa uh, study niya na ginagawa. Since, kumbaga, kulang pa yung information na maibibigay nila So, pwede pa itong dalawa na to mag-refer ng another, okay? Another persons na pwedeng makatulong doon sa research niya. And then, kapag kulang pa rin, okay, let's say kulang pa rin yung information or, kumbaga, hilaw pa yung result, pwede pa ulit kumuha, okay, ng another uh, respondents na pwedeng kumuha, uh, makatulong doon sa research niya. So, that is... A snowball sampling is a chain's referral sampling. Okay? 
Quota sampling, sample units are picked for convenience but certain quotas are given to interviewers. These designs are especially used in market research. Researchers choose these individuals according to specific traits or qualities. So that is quota sampling. Kumbaga meron silang target. Okay, meron lang silang target. Let's say for example dito sa illustration. So ang target nila is lalaki na above 50. So, yun lang ang maging respondents. So, kinukuha natin yung respondents based on the uh, qualities or traits na hinahanap natin na uh, hinahanap natin dun sa research nyo. Okay. Volunteer sampling. Samples units are volunteers in studies wherein the measuring process is painful or troublesome to our respondents. So, kapag volunteer something, madalas ito kapag, let's say, confidential yung, masyadong confidential yung research. Okay? And then, kapag sa mga medical field, like for example, yung vaccine, di ba? Kailangan yung mga test dito, yung samples na unang gagamitin ay dapat voluntary yung mga respondents. Kasi pwedeng... Let's say, yung vaccine na tinulok sa kanila ay pwedeng iba yung reaction sa katawan. So, kapag voluntary, of course, uh, alam mo dapat, agri ka sa magiging risk nun sa uh, katawan mo. So, that is voluntary something. And of course, like for example, yung mga research like uh, early pregnancy. So, med medyo ano kasi, maselan yung topic. So, kailangan yung mga respondents mo is voluntary lang silang mag-participate. Okay? So, next is purposive sampling, sometimes called judgmental or subjective sampling employs a procedure in which samples are chosen for special purpose. So, purposive sampling, so you set criteria. Okay, nagsiset ka ng criteria na kailangan pasok doon sa criteria mo ang magiging respondents mo. Like for example, ang, ang research mo is about the satisfaction level ng mga senior high school students regarding sa mega sale ng Shopee and Lazada. Diba? Uh, so, ano yung magiging, kung purposive something yung gagamitin mo, ano yung criteria mo? So, dapat, una dyan, nag-aaral. Okay? They are uh, currently enrolled. Pangalawa, dapat grade 12 kasi grade 12 yung nakalagay sa title mo. And pangatlo, of course, uh, they are uh, customer of Lazada and Shopee. And then, sila, and then dapat sila yung mga <coughs> umu-order tuwing may mega sale. So kapag yun ay pasok, so yun ang magiging respondents mo. So ganyan yung purposive something para mayroon kang criteria ang siniset. Okay, so test yourself. So pwede nyo itong i-post yung video. And then sagutan na, sagutan nyo. So number one, the teacher randomly select 20 boys and 15 girls from a batch of learners to be members of a group that will go to a field trip. Number two, a sample of 10 mice are selected at random from a set of 40 mice to test the effect of a certain medicine. So sa number one, the answer is stratified sampling. And number two, simple random sampling. Number three, the people in a certain seminar are all members of two of five groups are asked what they think about the president. So what will be the answer? Cluster sampling. Number four, a brand manager, uh, manager of a toothpaste asked 10 dentists that have clinic closest to his office whether they, say, they use a particular brand of toothpaste. Since a uh, Nandun yung word na closest to his office. So, that is convenience. A barangay health worker as every four house. So, nandun yung every four house. So, that in the village for the ages of the children living in those household. And that is systematic sampling. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.